you have this new study out saying women may be better equipped to fight COVID-19. Can you explain why that is? So we had two very unique findings. One that women had in our patients had higher number of made cells in health and that the, the, the profile of those cells looked very robust in terms of being able to fight infection. Males had much lower numbers. And on top of that, the profile of those cells looked very frail. It's stressed and on its way to die. So when you think about those two things, and then you think about the increased number of made cells in the lung tissue of women, and we were also able to show evidence of those protective genes in the lung data, allowed us to sort of put together the picture and conclude that um, it might be likely that these mate cells that are more prominent and more robust in women may contribute to uh, more protection that we see in women. As you know, uh, I think the numbers are around um, twofold higher risk for severe COVID and death in men, and that's worldwide. I think pretty much almost all of the countries that are reporting sex disaggregated data are seeing a twofold uh, uh, difference in men versus women in susceptibility. So putting all that together, we reason that this may explain that fact. On top of that, and I mentioned, you know, this is a global finding in terms of the susceptibility being higher in men. And it turns out from other papers um, also showed that these mate cells are higher in numbers in healthy populations in China, North Korea, um, or I don't know, I shouldn't say North or South Korea, I'll just say Korea, um, in Europe and American populations. So this difference is possibly explainable across the globe in terms of what may be causing or leading to that protection, so. And why is this an important thing to know at this point in the pandemic? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I think we have to understand um, what protects us or versus what makes us susceptible. So we just, we need that understanding to begin with. The more we understand about the virus, the more, more, the more ability we, we feel we will be able to combat it and understand how to suppress it. Um, so, you know, we can think about it in multiple ways. Um, potentially now that we have a, a cell type, um, that is protective. We can think about ways in which we can bolster those cells in particular patients. And that is not, um, that is, that's not impossible. Uh, in fact, it's happening right now. We have, um, we have uh, technologies like CAR T, CAR T cells in, in cancer, which are T cells, uh, genetically engineered T cells that are injected into patients. Um, and we've had T cells being planted in autoimmune patients before. So is it possible that we can develop um, a way to increase the number of mate cells? That's one. The second, if we can now, with the focus of mate cells, potentially we can look at how mate cells are being protected. And um, if that is, if we can identify a molecule, we can then create a drug potentially that would, um, that would be able to affect that protection, not necessarily with those cells, but with a pharmacological um, molecule. Do you think this would have any impact in the way men versus women are treated when it comes to a COVID-19 infection? Um, that's a, that's a loaded question. I, <laughs> I think, I think in any, okay. So let me, let me start by, um, let me start by saying this. Okay. There's, 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 there's diff we, we know that there are differences in how men and women, um, respond, their immune systems respond. Okay. We know, for example, women are more susceptible to certain autoimmune diseases, such as, such as multiple sclerosis, such as lupus, whereas men in, in general are more susceptible to cancers and we know Im the immune system plays a contr controls cancers. Um, so there are, there are what we call sexual dimorphisms, different small um, 
alterations that lead to big differences in the way the immune response handles uh, an infection. So in that case, there are differences. And uh, I think it's important to understand those differences so that we can treat a patient better, whether it's because they're male versus female, whether it's because they, you know, there are specific um, susceptibilities in a population that may be male and female because they have a gene variant that we have to understand that's associated with disease. So that would be my answer. And do you think that, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I think we would want to warn against women thinking, hey, I'm less susceptible to getting super sick from this virus. Do you think everyone should continue the same level of, of you know, precautions that they've been taking over the last, I guess, over the last year? Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. This in no way means that um, men should be hiding versus women should be outside. Um, it just, it's just explaining a bit about how our immune systems are handling the virus and everything that the, uh, all the precautions we need to take that are, are being put forth by our scientists, CDC and NIH should still be adhered to. How do you hope that this new finding um, will help in the, I guess in the larger scope of the pandemic or help to, to address the, this virus? Well, I mean, first of all, knowledge is power. The more we know clearly, the more we know, the less we're just in, afraid because it's, it's the unknown that we're, of, of course, it's death and sickness we're afraid of, but on top of that is the unknown, which is what we're afraid. Of. So as soon as we, as we know more about the virus, I think our fear levels go a little bit down. So we have more of a balanced approach on how we deal with the virus. I think that's for one. Second, I think, you know, other in the large picture, you know, coronaviruses in general seem to have a higher susceptibility in men. We saw that in in uh, MERS and we saw it in SARS-CoV-1. And so if there is a future coronavirus, um, it, maybe now we're, we'll, we'll have even more information to be equipped for that. And then potentially we still have variants that we may be fighting for a little bit longer. And you know we do have a virus and things are looking very bright, although we still have to maintain social distance, wear our masks, et cetera, and everybody should get vaccinated. Um, we still have these variants out there. And so we have to continue to understand how the body is successfully fighting those variants and coronaviruses in general. So that in the end of the day, if we need to continue to advance things like therapeutics, not just vaccines, these are the potential pieces of information that can be utilized to do so. And when it comes to this mate cell, I know you said it, um, it tends to gather in the eye and the nose and mouth. And these are all areas where um, COVID is, is passed through. So does that, is that one of the reasons where, that it is so protective or it has become so protective in women is because it's gathering in those, in those infection points? Yeah, no, you're, I think you, you nailed it. You hit the nail on the head. That's, that, that is what prompted us to be interested in this cell. So the first, the first finding that we had was that women, women had higher numbers. The second finding, um, the, the second finding was that these numbers dropped. Once we saw this interesting difference and knowing what these, what these mate cells, where these mate cells accumulate in the mucosal tissue really got us excited to, to, to chase after that information. So yes, I would agree with you. Is there anything else you think is important to share or say about this latest finding in the study? Um, I think, so there are, what I would say is that there are other studies that identified mate cells. What's interesting about our study is that we were able to capture with our collaborators, um, patients that uh, were not only critically ill. So a lot of the studies out there, especially those looking at mate cells, had captured critically ill patients. Fortunate through our collaboration with uh, Chris Woods, Mika McLean, and Jiling Shen at Duke University through their uh, roles in the veterinary school and infectious diseases, we were able to get a good number of patients that were infected but were treated in outpatient settings. So they were not critically ill and we can capture that 
those patients, the information from that patients, the data from that patients, from those patients. Also, um, we were very fortunate in that we had a sex balanced sampling. So if, 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 you, if, you, if you understand that um, men are more susceptible, so men are probably higher in percentages in hospitals because of this, it, you see most of the data, it's mostly um, um, more, more data samples from men. Um, and we were very lucky because since we were able to get the outpatient information too, an outpatient, we were able to, to have a very sex balanced data sampling. So the two of those things combined enabled us to make our finding, which, which is really, uh, we're very fortunate that we had those collaborations.